Hey, I thought I'd just put together a quick video about my little Maximite. Uh, this is a super fun little kit computer that I've been meaning to build for about the last five years and I've only just found time to do it. And it's basically a, a super simple computer with simple I.O. for a keyboard monitor and a, a little uh, interface port. And what I love about this is it boots straight up into BASIC. So it's very much like the old computers of yesteryear, the Commodore 64 or the Spectrum or Spectra videos. And it's got a lot of similarities to Quick Basic for DOS. And this makes it really fun because you can draw lines and circles and things very simply. It's got about 85k of memory, which is enough for the idea to run and for features like copy and paste to be there. And it's almost instant when you press run, so you can see straight away where things have gone wrong, like this graphic here where I've missed one of the coordinates. So I wanted to show you my first program that I put together to test some functionality. And this is so typical of the kind of program you would write as your test code. It's very sloppy, but you'll see there's a few things happening here. For starters, you'll see uh, there's a smooth scroller up the top, making sure it could do smooth scrolling with a nice blit. You can see here it's got a whole load of sprites that are animating, they're flickering a bit, and there's a little bit of an issue here where two sprites have crossed over each other and they're actually leaving trails on the screen. So you start learning very quickly about some of the limitations of the system and its quirks that are, uh, are kind of funny. I can fix the flickering, that's no big issue. One of the limitations I ran into was the fact you could only do 16 by 16 pixel sprites. And I really wanted to do 32 by 32. And one of the oldest tricks in the book to do this is actually to break uh, the image up into quadrants. But to do this manually is quite annoying. So I wrote a tool set that allowed me to effectively split up into those quadrants automatically from standard file formats and dump them straight into a format that would run into memory of the Maximite. The music is an Amiga mod file, but again, that had to be crunched right down, including uh, exploiting some tricks with out of range notes to make it fit in memory. Now, there are a few quirks with this machine, apart from some uh, sprite collisions and flickering and things like that, but one of them is that if you copy a bunch of text in the IDE and you copy more than 255 characters, it simply says you can't copy this. Why you can select it, I don't know, but you've got to select probably no more than five lines to copy and paste. A lot of other people have been having fun as well. You can see here's a bunch of games that people have developed. Uh, this is something I plan on trying to do. Now my unit does have one big issue and I've got no one to blame but myself. And that is when I go to save, it comes up with a pretty big error saying the SD card is right protected. Now I've had this thing on for about four days running off a single uh, battery because it really draws no power at all. I got about 90 hours worth of power. But unfortunately it's now sitting on about 5% power so we're going to unplug it and we're going to lose everything that I've worked on but we're going to fix it. So let's have a look. One thing I love about these Jiffy cases is how nice the screws are on them. It's just two screws to get into the case. Just tap in and then you're in. Such a nice departure from undoing a lot of modern cases that have so many screws in them. I love these. Let's take the top off and I reckon straight away we're going to be able to see what's going on. I can see it already. <laughs> I can't believe I actually missed that. Can you guys see it? And I do feel like a bit of an idiot. I've actually forgotten to solder these two pads here. <laughs> so <laughs> slightly off the pads this unit but that well, seems to be working so far. Obviously, without a uh, right protect switch, it's not going to write anything though. <laughs> so, that's going to be it. Alright, let's get the panel back on the front. It's a little fiddly getting these panels in. Getting the LEDs at the right height was actually quite a tricky thing to do. So, we'll drop out and we'll try saving to autorun.bass, which is what it loads when it starts, and there's no error. Let's take the power out of the brick. Plug it back in and we'll see if it loads. There we go. Now with SD save. All right, there we go. SD card is working. So there's only one thing left to do and that's to write some code. I reckon we're gonna do something with circles. So that's the color Maximite. For noodling around in basic, this thing is almost perfect. And I say almost, 
because there's a big elephant in the room, which is that it's eight garish colours and you can't change them, they're fixed. And this is super sad because if it had even 6-bit video, some page flipping and a CPU increase, this thing would be pretty much perfect. Alright, hold up. You know it's serious when I stop a video halfway through and I appear on camera because this was just going to be a little video that I was going to put on Twitter. But things changed. This has been in my cupboard for five years and I've just never really got around to making it. And I finally made it and then I spent last weekend knowing that I had to unplug it and lose everything because my SD slot wasn't working. And I concluded at the end of that that this unit uh, was an amazing basic all-in-one unit that is a fixed platform, much like a VIC-20 or a Commodore 64, so I can give my programs to other people who have these. And I was going to recommend uh, to a, a couple of my friends who are into Quick Basic as well that maybe we just get this box and we have it as a, a fun kind of platform to dev on. And I just couldn't bring myself to it because it didn't have 256 colors or even 16 or 64 colors that you could palletize. And that eight colors was killing me. So I went onto the website to send Jeff a message just to say, hey, I'm making this video on the Maximite. And I discovered this morning, the Maximite 2 is being announced. <laughs> Check out these features. And I know I sound excited, but there's a reason for that I'm gonna explain afterwards. So firstly, there's a bunch of graphics modes, and this includes 8-bit, 12-bit, and 16-bit modes, and you can choose between them depending if you want speed or you want fast graphics response. There's also a bunch of commands which you wish you had in other basics, where you have to jump to assembler or poke commands to make things work. Things like fast page scrolling or page copy or working with multiple video planes and working with large sprites. To cater for all this, there's half a mega RAM, there's a much faster CPU, there's a nunchuck interface on the front, and people have already created solutions for game pads that you can just plug in your favorite joystick. Meanwhile, in the code editor, you can see it's in color now, there's a file explorer, and you've got sensors that you can access straight from BASIC as well. So why am I so excited about a new version of this box? And I guess if you've ever programmed, uh, well, any of these machines really, uh, in BASIC, or you've programmed Quick Basic for DOS, and you've sat around, especially in mode 13, that was the VGA mode, doing things like uh, configuring the palette and then doing palette rotation tricks. And you add to that things like easily loading in images, playing music in the background, having sound effects easily triggered, and it becomes an incredibly fun box. And it's a bit like cold cut when they say they got rhythms they haven't used yet. And most basic coders have code they haven't used yet. I really hope the new version of this is as stable as this box was. I had this on for four days and it didn't crash once and I was doing all sorts of wild things with it. So that's a big thing. In terms of actually making one of these, uh, I'm assuming it'll be uh, published in Silicon Chip Magazine, which is Australia's main electronics magazine. This one was in the 2012 issue and I can imagine it'll be the same formula. It'll be the schematic and you'll have information about the components and things like that. There we go, that's me out. Yeah, I hope you guys uh, are doing well and enjoying the opportunity to catch up on some projects that maybe you didn't have the time at home uh, to work on previously. That's what it's all about, so take care.